Are you an investigative professional? Did you know you can find the best private investigator resources using investigatorstoolbox.com? This resource community was built exclusively for licensed investigators and investigative professionals. You can network directly with members, educate yourself through free webinars and blogs, and even create your own customizable research library. Membership starts for as little as 49 cents a day. Download the Investigators Toolbox app or visit our webpage at www.investigators-toolbox.com. Is a good case management system keeping you from taking your business to the next level? Crosstracks is the premier case management system for the investigative community. They're the only SOC 2 certified case management software available. Visit Crosstracks.com, tell them you're a listener, and save even more. Get a plan in place for the new year to grow your business to the next level. Welcome to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. Today we welcome Samantha Santiago. Samantha worked for the CIA for many years and in 2019 she opened up a business as a PI in Texas. She specializes in social media investigations and has a passion for criminal cases. She breaks down how she was able to transition into a private business. So please welcome Samantha Santiago and your host, private investigator, Matt Spare. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of PI Perspective. This is Matt Sperry, your host. I want to thank everybody for joining us for the program today. Um, so I reached out to a uh, person I had met uh, earlier this year out in Texas, a former federal agent, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to talk about her journey from working from the government to going into private practice. So I want to welcome Samantha Santiago to the show. Samantha, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So to protect uh, Samantha's uh, privacy here, we are actually um, not really doing video today. So it's just something we wanted to do to just ensure that, you know, Samantha has uh, the protections that she, uh, that she needs here. So I think the last time I saw you was in Texas in June, right? Or did we see each other in, no, I saw you in San Diego, right? In yeah, yeah, Osmosis Con conference. Right, right, right. Yeah. So we did, uh, <laughs> we bumped into each other a few times. So uh, yeah. we definitely hit the um, the circuit this year with, uh, with going to events. Um, mm -hmm. So you operate out of Texas, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, you were formerly, uh, you were an analyst for the CIA, right? So I was technically a targeting officer. Okay. So it's sort of combining both skill sets of an analyst and a case officer. I looked a little bit at your background and it, it showed that uh, you had studied uh, Chinese, I think, right? Um, so you can speak a, uh, or at least understand a, another language. I studied Chinese all throughout college, and then I lived abroad there for a semester. Okay. I can't say I'm fluent anymore just because it's been so long since right. I've spoken it. Um, but at one point, I was I was conversational. I, I'm not anymore. Gotcha, gotcha. But if somebody was throwing out a couple terms, you you may be able to pick up some things, right? Probably, yeah. Okay. So you had, you know, obviously college degree and then you, you ended up going down to DC and I think you worked for a law firm down there before you, you mm -hmm. got on board with the CIA, correct? Yeah. So I didn't know what I wanted to do when I graduated from college. I thought I wanted to become a lawyer. So I went into law. I was a paralegal for a year mm -hmm. in DC. But after that experience, I realized I definitely do not want to become a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> it, just wasn't, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, and at that time I applied to the CIA. I got in, um, Spent 13 years there, left a couple years ago, mm. moved to Austin, Texas, and started my own business. Okay. And then I got my private investigator license a couple months ago and have pivoted more towards the investigative field. Right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, just that, that desire. What? Why did you pick the CIA? What we interests you about doing that kind of work? I'm very mission-driven, mm -hmm. and I've always wanted to work counterterrorism ever since 9-11. I didn't think I would get in. But I applied. I met someone at a university uh, job fair, and I spoke to him about my background, what I was interested in, what I hoped to accomplish, and he encouraged me to apply. So I did. And then, you know, a year and a half later, I, I got it. So I decided it came at a perfect time because I had put in about a year at the law firm, and I had already known at that point I didn't want to go into law. And then the CIA uh, gave me an offer, so I figured this is the next best step for me. Right. You focused on doing research and, and things like that. So what what are some of the changes along the time that the 13 years that you were there that you saw come into place that uh, really helped make your job easier? 
Yeah, technology has definitely changed. I remember when social media became a thing, Mm -hmm. the various databases that we have now to analyze different social media accounts. Right. That's brand new. I hadn't, um, wasn't used to that. So you finished up the the, the career over there and you, you, um, you move out to Texas and uh, what made you decide to become a private investigator? So I've always loved investigating. I, I, I feel like I have a passion for it ever since I was a kid, mm-hmm. you know, I was watching X-Files and Dateline and <laughs> Unsolved Mysteries. I've, I've always loved crime documentaries and solving problems, solving mysteries. So I feel like I've, I've had a, an interest and a knack for it my mm-hmm. whole life. And I felt like it was almost like a natural transition going from the CIA to becoming a private investigator. You use a lot of the same skills. Right. I think the hardest part for me was just the business side of things. Right. Having my own business, figuring out how to create a website, figuring out how to market myself, especially after being under the radar for so long, putting right. myself out there. Yeah. Better to be careful than not careful, right? Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with that. And um, you got to take the steps there. Uh, yeah, it was interesting because I just recently um, interviewed Jerry Williams, uh, who's a retired FBI agent. And these were some of the conversations that actually we were having, that that whole transition, um, because her show is based upon uh, interviewing uh, FBI agents who are now retired and have gone off on their own. And that, that whole transition, I, I think I find it so interesting, you know, just you're working for the government, you have all these resources, all these tools, all these, all that stuff. And now you're not right. And you got to figure it out on your own. Yeah. There's databases. You can, you can, you know, get information that we need to get. You'll, you'll get enough to get the job done. But I think where folks have the biggest problem also is what you just mentioned, right? That whole business acumen side of it, right? How do you actually run a business um, now that you're not working for somebody and you're on your own, right? So what was that experience for you? Like, I mean, the learning curve is definitely steep. You're used to having all the information at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. And I learned a lot of new databases, new software programs that I hadn't used before. What I found most useful was just networking with other folks. So I got my PI license a couple of weeks before the tally conference. Mm-hmm. That was a great opportunity for me to meet other PIs, learn more about the profession, you know, network with other really talented folks. And you know, I followed up with them after the conference. Um, that's how I got some of the subcontracting gigs that I got after the conference. And, you know, it's all about learning and networking and being proactive. Um, I think those are the, the keys to success. Yeah. And really, you know, being willing to, to do that subcontracting work is a great window for someone just starting off, right? Because yeah. some of the, the bigger businesses, the folks that have been around for a while, you know, they get the business and, and they're busting at the seams, not enough to hire somebody, but they actually have extra work where they would want to do it. Or maybe they don't specialize in the type of research that you do, um, you know, being able to provide that service mm-hmm. uh, to another uh business is, is definitely a key of how you can, you know, get your foot in the door. And, and, uh, I know for me personal experience, like when I find, uh, somebody that I like to give research to, if they're diligent, um, I mean, I'm going to give them everything, I'm, you know, cause I know that they're going to do a good job on it. You know, it's like yeah. your reputation sets itself. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I, as long as you do a good job for one person, hopefully they spread the word and yeah. hopefully you get more business that way. Yeah, and I think the methodology that you've learned working where you did it can only mm-hmm. be helpful. You know, there's a certain yeah. way of, of doing things. And, you know, in this business also, you're only as good as your contacts as well, right? So, um, you know, there are other folks like yourself that work for the government that are now not working for the government and, and being able to interact with those people and, and, continue those relationships, uh, I think is important as well. Yeah. The, um, network of, uh, former CIA folks, um, that has also been incredibly valuable for me. Sure. People that have, uh, left the CIA as well and started their own business. They were a great resource for me. Uh, you know, a lot of them gave me great advice. One of them suggested, Hey, why don't you start your own company? I, at that time I hadn't even thought of it. It hadn't even right. crossed my mind because I'm thinking I'm not a business person. I, could never start my own company. But then when I spoke to this person, he kind of gave me the rundown of what it takes. And I thought, oh, this isn't as difficult as I I thought it might be. So then that brought me down the path of creating a business structure, um, figuring out what I want to focus on, things like that. And that's uh, Premier Pathfinders is is your business, correct? Yes. 
what are some of the challenges that you, that you've seen since you've actually opened up your doors and now you're soliciting uh, business marketing myself and marketing my business like i said i've had some contracting subcontracting roles for other pis mm-hmm. but i would like to have direct business with a law firm i want to specialize in criminal investigations mm-hmm. so i'd like to have that direct relationship with law firms but i you know it's a matter of putting myself out there which i'm not used to right I operated on the radar for so long that it's exciting for me just to have a business card. <laughs> exactly. Like, welcome Talk back to, to everyone I know. <laughs> welcome back to society. <laughs> you, know? Uh, it, you know, it's it's interesting you say that, right? So you're just kind of untraining yourself. You know, that whole stealthiness. You gotta yeah. you gotta stop doing that, right? You gotta yeah. you gotta do it. And it, it was really good to actually meet you in Texas, and it was good to see you again in San Diego, you know, seeing that you're making the effort to get out there in the network, you know, especially out osmosis. I mean, that's, that's just a great place for someone with your skill set to, to go and network with other like-minded people for sure. Yeah. I think that you definitely have to do that. If you're just starting off, you really have to put yourself out there and go to conferences, take training classes. And that's what I've been trying to do these past few months. Right. I went to the tally conference, went to the open source intelligence conference in San Diego and been trying to take a lot of training classes you know, under, with the understanding there's a lot out there that I don't know. A yeah. lot of things have changed, a lot of new technologies and yeah. That's a good way to, to approach things, right? Because I think another mistake that a lot of folks that are just getting into this industry, they're starting off with, like they try and do too many different things and they end up doing a little bit of everything just poorly, <laughs> you know, instead of, you know, focusing and, and becoming good at one particular area. Uh, I've seen a lot of folks fail for that reason, you know, where they just you know, yeah. they get their opportunity to do something for someone or a law firm or, or something like that. And they just don't hit it out of the park because they're too busy trying to do all that other type of work as well. So it's definitely mm-hmm. a mistake. What are uh, some of the things that you're excited about getting, uh, getting involved in going forward? I've been doing a lot of social media analysis. Mm-hmm. Um, I love doing that. And I'm just excited to grow my business and to take on interesting cases, make a difference. Right. It just takes one, right? So you, you just need to get that one client, that one firm that um, that can give you a chance. I know like when I started my business many, many years ago, you know, I had almost gone out of business. That was the other thing I was doing. I was paying myself uh, like I was like the CEO of this big company that I wasn't actually making money yet. Uh, so my, uh, my funds got depleted uh, right down uh, to, to almost the very end um, until I hit with a, a client and somebody that, was consistently giving me work um, and uh, they were paying consistently too, which is very good. And Mm -hmm. it was all a matter of that. It was an overflow case, right? So somebody had gotten a photo assignment, somebody that I knew um, and they couldn't cover that assignment. So they had asked me to, you know, fill in for it. I went, I did the job. I did a good job doing it. And I did a good job because this person had trained me how to do that work. And then when I spoke with the law firm, they're like, Oh, you do investigations too wow, we need somebody to do that. Why don't you come in and start doing that? So it's like, you never know where, uh, where that, that break, uh, could come in and, uh, you know, how you can take advantage of that. It's, uh, it's definitely interesting, um, to do that. We're going to jump out and take a break real quick. And when we come back, we're going to just talk a little bit more about that whole transition thing and, um, you know, what that looks like. So, uh, everybody sit tight and we will be right back. Gulf Point keeps on advancing. The commonality search is here. The new data is unlike anything they currently offer and will go in depth into your target's assets and relationships. Use them on everything from jury research and associate connections to business investigations and fraud cases. You don't want to miss these. Visit DelphPoint.com for more details. Sign up and use code PIP20 for additional savings. In 2019, Investigation Education Consultants added a new affiliate in its never-ending quest to provide quality professional investigative training. IEC is now offering certificate courses and investigative training online. Our website, IECOIT.com. 
will soon offer a certificate in professional investigation for those interested in entering the investigative field. There'll be standalone investigation classes for those seeking continuing education credits, CEUs, or just interested in taking classes for their own personal or professional interests. The classes currently available are Foundations of Investigation, Legal Investigation, Criminal Investigation, Fraud Investigation, Background Investigation, Interviews and Statements, Skip Tracing Locates, Ethics, and Report Writing. Investigator Toolbox members will receive a 20% discount off the listed price. So visit IECOIT.com. Are you a member of NCISS? Do you know what this great organization does? The National Council of Investigation and Security Services was formed in 1975 to keep a watchful eye on legislation that affects our industry. Now more than ever, there are data privacy and DMV issues popping up all over the country. Consider joining and supporting this much-needed watchdog for our industry. Learn more at NCISS.org. Hey, check out the latest issue of PI Magazine. Robert Freed and Dr. Henry Lee grace the cover. Find it online or via hard copy. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. Today we are joined by Samantha Santiago. Samantha, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. So um, Premier Pathfinders is your business. You're in Austin, Texas, and uh, you are a uh, former government employee who has turned into a private investigator. Yep, that's correct. Again, before we jumped out to the break, we had talked about like going to events and things of that nature, um, like conferences and, and, and networking and really the, the need for it. How did you decide which conferences that you were going to go to? What what was the, the decision making process in that? Well, the teleconference was a no brainer. I found out about it through a uh, colleague of mine and I'm like, well, that's that's perfect. I should go to that. Again, like I said, it came at a perfect time because I just got my license a few weeks prior. Right. So wanted to go to that. And then I want to focus on open source intelligence and analysis. I like doing that type of research. Right. So I believe I found out about OsmosisCon from a training class that I was in. Okay. Somebody mentioned that and I looked it up. I'm like, oh, that sounds like something I should attend. And I did. Yeah, I think when we had met, that was one of the things I said too. Like, hey, you should probably go to this one. This will be good for you. Yeah. Uh, just just knowing. And it was. It was great. And that was one that usually like I'll sponsor conferences and I don't really get to sit in and listen to the presentations. But Osmosis is one where I'll, I'll actually not sponsor and I'll just go sit in and learn because it's just mind-blowing to see all the, the cool stuff that uh, is being done out there. Yeah, especially the stuff about the dark web. That was That was pretty cool. Yeah. What's interesting about all that stuff, right? So let's say here's Samantha, you've got your, your company and now you've got a phone call from somebody saying, wow, I need, I need this dark web research done. And you just started learning about it. You don't know too much about it. You know, typically you may say like, oh, well, that's not, that's not what I can do. So uh, yeah, thanks for the call, but I'm probably not the right person for you, which is an easy reaction that, that we can all make, especially if we're just starting our business and we're hesitant to, um, to take on that work. But, you know, through, through going to osmosis, things like that, and you meet those contacts and now you can say like, okay, let me uh, get my team uh, working on this and uh, we'll see if we can assist you. Right. So then you go and you contact the folks that you met out at, at that conference and say, Hey, this is what I got here. Do you think you'd be able to handle it? Uh, and of course they say yes. And now all of a sudden you're able to handle that stuff. Right. So now you're increasing your network and the, and the, uh, your ability to cover certain assignments, right? Yeah. So I added dark web and digital forensics to my kind of wheelhouse mm -hmm. because I, I met a few people that specialize in dark web. There's only so much I can do. They focus 100% on it. They're the experts. So right. I have people I can contact should somebody ask me for that type of work. Definitely. Definitely. So what type of uh, assignments you had mentioned that you know, you've done some subcontracting work for other investigators, mm -hmm. what what type of uh, assignments have you done for them? And just in general, I don't need specifics, please. <laughs> just, uh, you know, like that type of work. So a lot of it has been open source intelligence analysis, providing leads in the criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. The last two years, I've been doing a variety of cases like missing persons, kidnapping cases, 
I did a lot of human trafficking cases right. um, where I networked human trafficking networks um, at a particular geographic location and worked with law enforcement to sort of bring in those networks. That is what kind of piqued my interest in criminal investigation. So that's sure. why I wanted to focus my company on that. And most of it, like I said, working for PIs has been about mostly digging up information that's hard to find sure. and providing leads on individuals for a particular you know, criminal case. Yeah. That, that trafficking stuff is so, so interesting. And it's, it's such a rabbit hole, you know, like mm-hmm. once you start going down there, like it, <laughs> when does it end? Right. You can really find yourself getting uh, obsessed with it and you want to solve that problem. You know, it's, this is life and death and just really important stuff. So that's, uh, that's really interesting work to do. Yeah, for sure. I definitely learned a lot. It was very fulfilling and rewarding work. Mm-hmm. So do you see yourself ever like hiring more people uh, or do you think it, you'll just kind of be like a one person shop? I would like to hire more people. I'd love to have other PIs that I collaborate with, you know, coming from the agency, having worked at the agency for so long, I'm used to working in that team environment. Right. So I kind of miss that working solo. Right. So I would like to have a network of trusted PIs that I reach out to, that I work with. I'd like to grow my company and be able to offer more to my clients. That's interesting. I mean, it's always one of the, the things you want to do. I've actually seen folks that have been in your situation that have teamed up with folks that were the exact like opposite, that had no governmental, but but maybe they had business contacts or or maybe they had a certain skill set, you know, that was completely opposite and they were able to like hedge the experience of, of the federal government contacts and that network along with now the skill set of doing this other stuff where it's, it's been a good model. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not telling you to go out and, and, and partner up your business, but you know, having those relationships or at least being able to meet people to, to do that is definitely another avenue of, uh, of how you can, uh, of how you can do it. Is there a, uh, a particular type of investigative work that you don't like doing? Hmm. I'm not too crazy about infidelity investigations. Yeah, I'm with you. It's just not my thing. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Uh, so I don't advertise that on my website. I'm just more interested in catching the bad guy. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I love criminal I'm investigations. You. I'm with you. I always frowned away from doing the uh, infidelity. And listen, there's there's money in there. Definitely there's money to, to be made doing that kind of work. But you know, I, I got frustrated with catching people and then them reconciling and then the one spouse coming back and saying, uh, he did it again. You got to go get him. And it's like, I already did that. <laughs> like, why did you not listen the first time? Yeah. Um, so you get that kind of stuff or there's the, you know, we didn't catch him or her. We didn't catch them this time. Uh, and, and they're like, Oh wow. I laid out all this money. You're like, yeah, but we don't guarantee the results of what you're going to, going to get, you know, we guarantee, we'll guarantee you we'll do the job, but we won't guarantee you what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Just one too many of those conversations I, I don't like. And in general, I don't like doing surveillance either. The the idea of sitting somewhere for hours and hours and hours at a time, like my mind just goes too quickly. I'm 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 too multitasking, like multi oriented. I just don't have the bandwidth to to sit somewhere and, and, and observe for, for a long period of time. It's just not the way I'm programmed. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'll do surveillance. I mean, I, I have capabilities to do surveillance if the job requires it mm-hmm. um, as part of an assignment. But, you know, I, I don't want to focus my company 100% on surveillance. That's yeah. not what I do. Yeah. It's just a component to a means to an end. Yeah. And that's kind of similar. Like the way I've structured my business was I, I won't turn the work away. If you call me and you want me to do it, I'll find you somebody, you know, in my network that'll do it. Neither will run it through my business or they'll run it and I'll just get a commission on it. You know, we've, we've done it that way. And I, I do have uh, in-house people that are skilled at it, that like to do it. We'll do it from now, you know, from uh, time to time, but it's definitely not something I market that like, Hey, I'm the guy to call when you need this done. But I do find that like having the show here now, like I, I do get a lot of calls from out of state people like, Oh, you know, I, I'm looking for this to be done. Or I'm looking for that to be done. And, uh, you know, it's not always something that I like to do or, or I specialize in. Um, mm-hmm. and I'll just, uh, I'll put it in the right person's hands. And and that's the other thing, right? I'm, I'm, I'm getting to be known as the, the guy that knows people, yeah, which I'm okay with that because I like knowing people. Uh, yeah. So it's like, if Matt doesn't do it, he's going to know somebody who does, right? <laughs> which is always good. 
Yeah. Uh, so when someone calls me up and says, Hey, I'm looking for uh, you know, research analyst, someone who specialized in doing social media who's from Austin, it's like, Okay, well, I know Samantha, so here you go. Give her a call. <laughs> give, her, give her a call. <laughs> it's always one of those those challenges, right? When you first decide that you want to get into this business, really trying to understand what you want to do and what you're good at. And it's so hard to say no also in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, I mean, challenge. when you're first starting out, you need that income. Yeah. You need to make a living. You know, you need to take jobs that you, you may not be too jazzed about. Yeah. But, you know, you're trying to grow your business, grow your company, get your name out there, do good work for people. So it's a necessity in the beginning. And then I think over time, you can hone in on what you really want to do. Sure. I mean, for me, also, it was uh, process serving. I hated doing process serving, but I had clients that, you know, Hey, we need a full service investigator. So we need somebody who's going to do our investigative work, but is also going to do process serving on top of that. So going out and serving papers to me was another one. I just, I didn't like doing it. You know, um, I was good at it. You know, I was creative when I needed to be creative, but I just, I didn't enjoy it. Um, and then when they started changing the rules where you had to have GPS coordinates and you got to log in and do all this crazy stuff. I got to the point where I just wasn't doing enough of it where it was worthwhile. And I, I stopped. Yeah. So I have a third party now that does all that stuff for me, Yeah, which is always good. So like, where do you hope to be in the next year? I hope to have a team of people that I work with mm-hmm. and I hope to have law firm clients that I work with on a consistent basis. In the future, I would love to do cold cases. Right. Okay. So like going forward, uh, what would you say like some of the skills that you acquired in your former life that have translated very well over to what you're doing now? A lot of the skills that you apply as a CIA officer can be applied as a private investigator. So, you know, you use a lot of the same skill sets. It's finding and collecting information, analyzing it, figuring out what's important. What does the client or the customer need to know Mm -hmm. to you know, make the best decision, whether it be, you know, the next step in an operation or, you know, a lead to the person that, that has the information that you need. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about solving problems and analyzing the risk versus gain, um, looking at all the possibilities, even if they seem implausible. Right. So I think that that level of critical thinking is um, something that, transitions well, something that you can apply as a PI. Again, a lot of those same skills apply. You always want to take your skill set, the things that you'd learn along the way and apply it to the next thing that you do. I think if you can do that, like you're only going to get better at, uh, at the things that you do. Like I've always made it a point that whatever job I had, the next job, I was always going to take a bar with some of the lessons that I learned um, at the prior job at like what I'm doing. So like at one point in my life, I was a, a, a tech recruiter. So I would interview people for computer jobs, right? So how would that translate? Well, you know, having that interaction with people and creating a comfort level, someone shows up to a job interview and they're super nervous, you know, um, you know, me not knowing that eventually I was going to need to interview people who are witnesses to accidents, you know, and, and they're probably super nervous. Like how do you, how do you make them calm? How do you, you know, create that comfort level? You know, that was one of the things too. There was another job where I worked for a mystery shopping company. I was managing their whole business, um, but I, it, it was a lot of scheduling, right? So it was a lot of like, okay, on this day, we're going to go to this place and that place and this place. And I kept track of it. I made charts and things like that. So I took that whole model when I started my own business of like, okay, where am I going to be today? How am I going to maximize my time? Um, what assignments can I do that are close to one another? So so being able to take that idea um, of doing things is uh it was very helpful um I, you know i think one of the other things too um and they had talked about this in osmosis also was like learning how to ask the right questions to your client right when they call yeah. you to give you that assignment you know making sure you're asking the right questions to set them up for their expectations mm-hmm. uh, and um you know making sure that they they understand what you're going to do uh, and when you're going to come back to them and say hey you know we need more uh, funding <laughs> to continue the research is not that big sticker shock if you're kind of walking them through the, uh, the the process of things, right? Yeah, that's definitely key to make sure that you're answering the problem that the client wants because you could be spending all this time producing this, you know, fancy assessment, this really nice, uh, well written, concise assessment, and then they say that's not exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, you know, I yeah. wanted, I was actually referring to this or that or 
Um, so it really is important to to know what the customer wants. Yeah, and it's interesting that you say that because I, I, I feel the folks that do this social media research, that do that analyzing, can really fall into that trap of creating these huge reports and developing all this information that they, at the end of the day doesn't answer the question doesn't mean anything yes it, yeah. it, it's it's showing like it's almost like okay it's costing you this amount of money this is what you're getting for this amount of money but if all that they're getting is not answering the question that's that's a problem you know it's like sometimes the answer is there is not an answer and you just got to mm-hmm. be straight with it as opposed to giving somebody you know 100 pages worth of fluff that um, is a waste of time for everyone so I've seen that before too, just, you know, they'll give a data dump of information Mm -hmm. with no analysis. Yep. So, you know, it's easy to click the button and get this computer generated report that has everything, but you really need that human element to review the information, analyze it, analyze it, figure out, figure out what it means. You know, if, if someone has a common name, a lot of times their computer will conflate a couple individuals and you're going to have to figure out, is this person is at their criminal record or is that somebody else with the same name? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's a bunch of Samantha Santiago's out there too. There is actually. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Which works to my advantage actually. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's true. Right. For someone trying to, trying to stay low. You, you you got a good point there. At Uh, least back then. Not now. (laughs) All right. Don't get married. You'll have to change your name. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I mean that's that's all interesting stuff. So Samantha, we're going to wind down here. I um I appreciate your time. I appreciate you you coming on and just um you know talking about that experience of uh, or, or your experience of of that transition. I think it's so important for folks that are getting close to deciding what they want to do. You know, after government life, um, and really talking about the pitfalls and and the advantages and your story of how you made it to where you where you are and you're you're making your way, which is exciting. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show. Thank yeah. you. So why don't you give me the, the website uh, of how folks uh, can can find you? So my website is premierpathfinders.com and Premier is spelled P-E-R-M-I-E-R. So without the E at the end. Awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you everybody for tuning into the show this week and we'll catch everybody next week with another episode. Special thanks to Samantha for jumping on and sharing her experience about starting her business. We'd like to thank Cross Tracks, Delve Point, and Investigation Education Consultants, as well as NCISS for sponsoring our show. So please support our great supporters. Have you thought about joining Investigators Toolbox? Now's the time to do it. Use code HOLIDAY21 and save $50 to join. This discount ends at the end of 2021. Got a question or a comment about the show? Email Matt at MatthewS at SatellitePI.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We want your feedback to bring you the best shows possible. And we'll be back next Monday with a new show. So make sure you tune in and stay safe out there.